Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue our journey watching Darcy and Stacy. Let's get to it. My name is Dr. Karkonda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Let's see if anything of interest comes out of my mouth. I got some news, babe. What news? You know Darcy and I have been wanting to launch the clothing line. We decided we're going to take a trip to L.A. When? Like soon. What is it for my son? Well, first of all, we're going for work. We're going to rebuild House of Eleven and to build our legacy for our family and our kids. And, I understand. You know, that's, you know, that's always been part of our dream and our mission in life. Why now? Why, for what is now? I, I need to focus on my I career. I know like to rush what rush Dursi. What's like to rush Dursi? I know rush what Dursi rush. I know follow Dursi. Well, I told her we're going, so... Who cares who is Dursi? All right, so it's really hard to know what's happening for Florian right now seems like Florian is saying he doesn't like Darcy and he doesn't want his future wife to be involved more with Darcy or something. There's pressure Stacy so much. Understand? He can't listen to you. He's pressing so much. Darcy like to do something he's like to do right now. Understand? What Darcy like? It make you frustrated. Okay, but this isn't like a minor issue. This is something that your fiancé wants to do with her career. Uh, I w would think that as the fiancé, you would say something, something like, wow, that sounds really exciting. Tell me more. I'm so glad that you're following your dreams. This is really great. And then maybe later address any kind of minor concerns you have selfishly, so to speak. Um, but that's not what we're hearing, so let's continue watching. To move so fast, to make the plan so fast. One week you here, I'm here in I America. know. You just got here and you're just settling in and yeah. you're just meeting the fam. And now, he does bring up kind of a good point, which is, whoa, like we were about to get married and now you're talking about maybe moving to L.A. I, it's not what she's saying. She's saying she's just going to visit there, by the way. But uh, he's a little thrown off by this and he's what how how does this affect our relationship does this affect where i'm going to live does it, you know what what's going on here nothing wrong with asking those questions the way he's asking the questions though if i were to describe this you know an exercise i often like to do is what age would that look like to you well this would look like a mom and a boy really not even necessarily a teenager like a 10 year old 12 year old boy where mommy is saying, you know, I'm, I might go to L.A., da-da-da, and 12-year-old is like, oh, what do you mean? I, I don't understand. I'm not mocking him. As I always say, I'm just emulating what a 12-year-old sounds like sometimes. Not all 12-year-olds. Hashtag not all 12-year-olds, as some of you will comment below. And uh, it kind of looks like that. I don't know. Maybe he'll come up with some more nuanced, more adult-like back-and-forth conversation. But let's rewind and watch that again, again and keep in mind what sort of age he exhibits. Now, why would someone do that? Do they do that on purpose? Probably not. Is it because they're a stupid head? Probably not. It's probably because of issues growing up. You weren't allowed to grow up or you weren't heard enough or given enough attention at that age. And so there's a part of you that still very much is that age. Let's rewind and watch. One week you here. I'm here in I America. know. You just got here and you're just settling in and yeah. you're just meeting the fam and I get it. Listen to me. Here. For what say Darcy, I f her. Darcy, it's not your boss to, 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 to tell know. you like this, like this, like this. I have 90 days for Mary and I need to go LA right now. Go to LA right now. I just come here and my life in Connecticut is Stacy happy. I'm happy. I'm good. I don't need to spend time for friends there in LA. All right, totally fine. If you have concerns about moving to LA and you like staying in, in Connecticut, totally fine. You can express that, but there's a back and forth where you listen to someone, you express yourself, you listen to someone, not just completely living within your own preferences. You have to understand this is, I'm in business mode too. And if I don't start pulling my weight, she's just gonna resent me and Start controlling it's everything, start, and then it's, it's not going to be good. All right, so Florian seems to be referring to a dynamic between Stacy and Darcy that maybe we're not privy to because the cameras aren't around all the time. 
in that Stacy feels as though Darcy is often dominating her and always bossing her around. Or when Darcy wants something, Stacy has to do it to account for Darcy's issues. We could see that maybe being the case. We don't know. And then Stacy seems to be actually speaking to that a little bit of like, well, you know, Darcy, if if I, you know, she's going to get on me, and if I'm not pulling my weight with the business, and what we're not hearing from Stacy, and we really haven't yet, and you know, because they don't show us everything that ever happens, is Stacy does she really want to do this? Because Darcy was saying, this is what I want to do, this is my dream, let's get it, you know, going again, and Stacy was like, oh, okay, is Stacy as invested as Darcy is? We don't know yet. And so maybe Florian is making a good point here that Stacy can hear of just like, yeah, you know, I, I'm doing this mainly because I, I want to avoid Darcy getting angry at me. That's kind of the way it sounds. Uh, at least that's part of the issue. Let's rewind and hear that again. You have to understand this is I'm in business mode, too. And if I don't start pulling my weight, she's just going to resent me and start controlling everything start, and then it's, it's not going to be good. Okay, I respect your sister, but nothing more. It's for, this is change for me. For me, it's not make sense. It's no more important. I, I think no more change. Doesn't matter where we live, we, we're still going to be together. All right, so this is a pretty classic undifferentiated triangle between Darcy, Stacy, and Florian. I would want to get to the bottom of what does each person want? Uh, we know that Darcy wants to get the business going and she, it sounds like she wants to move to LA. For Stacy, at least we haven't heard yet exactly what she wants. Does she want to move to LA completely independent of outside influence? I don't think we're hearing that necessarily because if if she doesn't know what she wants and she feels like she has to go to LA to please Darcy. So maybe Stacy is like, well, I I'm willing to do the business thing, but I don't know if I want to go completely uh, full hog into it because I don't, I don't know if I want to spend all my time doing that. I'll do some of the work. So let's say Stacy, because I don't know, let's say that Stacy is having a hard time really expressing or even knowing what she really wants. And Florian is picking up on that in Stacy. Florian is picking up in Stacy that Stacy's on the fence. She doesn't really know how much she wants to get, get involved with this thing again. Maybe Florian actually is making some points here that Stacy actually enjoys. And that, that's how undifferentiated people work. I often talk about undifferentiated individuals, you know, not understanding the difference between your instincts and reactivity and your knee-jerk reactions and your logical, rational reasoning ability to reflect on those emotions. Uh, you know, when people are undifferentiated or fused, they, they can't differentiate between their feelings and their thoughts. Well, the concept also extends to interpersonal relations in that people can become fused or undifferentiated with, a, with other people. And when we're raised in a way that's undifferentiated, we sustain that, that state of fusion in our relationships in adult life. And we've seen a lot of issues that Darcy and Stacy exhibit. So it stands to reason that both Stacy and Darcy might have some issues with differentiation. I don't know. I can't diagnose. It's not a diagnosis anyway, but I can only speculate based on the little bit that they tell us on the show. And maybe for Stacy, she's always reacting to people outside of her. She's never really knowing what she wants. And so she mistakes her own wants with Darcy's wants. Maybe even that was their role growing up. It's total speculation, but maybe Darcy and Stacy had a symbiotic relationship. Siblings often do, twins particularly often do. And Darcy was the one who always had the dreams and the aspirations and Stacy just tried to accommodate that and never really had her own dreams and her own aspirations, who knows? For Stacy, she feels caught between what Darcy wants and what Florian wants. But until Stacy established what, what she wants so that she can actually interface with both people, then Stacy runs the risk of always being unhappy and always disappointing everyone around her. Let's continue watching. I, I'm done for this decision. I agree here. I understand. You read the more discussion just next. I don't know what I said wrong, but uh, yeah, you're fine. Fine. Well, that thing's fine. But it is important that 
You talk. Maybe let's squash it. Let's let's support. Well, you know, understand. You know, understand. You and there seem to understand. All right. I don't know what's going on here, but we are clearly seeing a pattern where Florian explodes and walks off and is starting to increase his verbal abuse rhetoric and statements. And it's always so interesting because up until the beginning of this season, all we saw of Florian was this mild-mannered, nice guy, this long-term, five-year, long, long-distance relationship with Stacy, And it looks so healthy from the outside in comparison to Darcy's Tom and Darcy's uh, Jesse. And then we see this. <laughs> so we can't judge a book by its cover, obviously. Now, it's really hard to figure out what's going on here without knowing more from Florian. Maybe he has some reasonable reasons as to why he's getting upset. I'm not seeing any of those reasons. Who knows what's going on here? But we are starting to see some very concerning behavior from Florian. And I'm starting to feel very bad for Stacy in this moment. Let's rewind that and watch that again. Doesn't matter where we live, we, we're still going to be together. I, I'm done for this decision. I agree here. I understand. You read the more this question just next. I don't know what I said wrong, but. Uh, yeah, you said fine. Fine. that thing's fine. But it is important that you talk about it. Let us support. Well, you don't understand. You don't understand. You and there seem to understand. So this is another speculation. I wonder if Florian feels as though there's no back and forth communication. It's probably mutually caused, but maybe at least if we asked him how he feels or what's going on for him, he would say like, well, I came to Connecticut to marry Stacy only, not to marry Darcy and to be in a relationship with Stacy and for us to live in Connecticut. And now all of a sudden her sister comes in and suddenly my wife is moving to LA and now I'm supposed to just go to LA. At no point did my wife ask me if I wanted to go to LA. She never asked me what I wanted. I wonder if that's what's going on for Florian. It would at least make some sense as to why he'd be upset. Now, of course, Florian at no point has, has asked Stacy, what do you want? Do you want me to move to LA with you? Do, you? do you want to move to LA or are you only doing it because of Darcy? Let's talk about this. You know, let's talk about the pros and the cons here. Do you want me to move to LA with you? Because it, when we're undifferentiated and we're just reacting to everything around us, then we never really sit and say, what do I want? And then when other people interface with us, they get this vague sense that we're not really there. And it's possible that Florian is reaching for something like, are you there? And not really being able to grab onto anything. I'm not explaining that very well. Maybe I'll explain that better as we move forward because that's based on very little information, total speculation. By the way, if you haven't yet, subscribe below. If you like this video, you can up, up like it, up thumb it. <laughs> if you don't like it, you can down thumb it. Uh, comment below. I'm always, uh, every once in a while, I'll, I'll read all the comments. If I have, you know, an extra 20 minutes, I'll just read all the comments and, and comment back to people. I, I don't always have that chance, but um, I'm always curious as to what your reactions are to the show and I guess to what I'm saying. Let's get back to the show. I know a little. I understand for everything. Trust me. Shh. Can you relax, please? Shh, stop and Please relax. Let's do it. No, I don't need to relax. There's a push so much. Push, push or f ball, I say. You need to rush. Slow, slow. To my face, it's still dirty be the boss. Yeah, I get it. I know. She's uh, to my face, no possible. Again, if I was to put this into an age group, I would put it at a impertinent teenager. I've treated a lot of families and that's the vibe you get from a teenager who is being oppositional of just like, no, not gonna have it, you know, just, just, it's final, you know, these kinds of statements and nothing along the lines of, okay, let's talk about it. What do you want? Here's what I want. Here's how I feel about it. How do you feel about it? Hmm, I see where you're coming from there. You know, teenagers don't often do that. They could do that if they 
felt like it. I've actually tried to get teenagers to do that for a lot of reasons, but they often don't naturally get there. A lot of adults never get there. So when a 13-year-old really wants something, developmentally, they're at a stage where, where they're not really, you know, caring about other people's wants, particularly their parents, particularly when their parents' wants interfere with their wants. So we can excuse a 13-year-old because they're still a child. But for a grown man to be acting this way, we can still forgive him, but we'd want to know what was going on as to why he would have that arrested development. We also don't know. I, I'm still trying to figure this one out because I'm wondering if Florian will tell us more about how he feels. Maybe there's some kind of basis to why he's flipping out so much here. Because I, th I think that he, he does potentially have a legitimate complaint in that he isn't hearing from his fiance that she actually wants to move to L.A., because she wants to move to LA. What he's hearing from her potentially is, my wife wants to move to LA because Darcy wants to move to LA. And if that's true, then Florian might actually feel like he's sticking up for his wife by throwing this tantrum. I don't know. Let's continue watching. It's not my dream, Marvin. It's my dream, you. It's not my dream, LA. I get it, but I want you to go. No matter what, being Connecticut or Antarctica or in LA, I can sacrifice everything just to make Stacy happy. Oh, I'm coming with you. I have you, I have everything. I love you. I love you too. Same here. Okay. All right, he eventually came around. It's confusing. <laughs> he went from zero to 10 back to zero again. Uh, it's hard to figure him out. All right, well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle in which I watch Darcy and Stacy and see if anything of interest comes out of my face. I hope at least something of interest came out of my face today. Let me know in the comments what, if anything did or if nothing did. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.